Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. On the 2nd of February 2025, Iran's Ministry of Defense presented some of its latest developments to President Pazeshkian. The exhibition provided detailed insights into Iran's advancements in areas such as space technology, ballistic missiles, air defense, and various other fields with several new systems being unveiled for the first time. It is important to note that these systems were exclusively those developed by the Ministry of Defense and its subsidiaries. It should be clarified that Iran also has other defense industry branches, such as the IRGC and the Army, which produce their own systems separately from the Ministry of Defense. We will begin by discussing the area with the most systems presented for the first time publicly, which is air defense. One of the key highlights was the unveiling of the NAVAB Advanced Short Range Surface to Air Missile. While the rough shape of the missile had been seen in launch footage, this exhibition provided clearer details about this missile, which is used both on land and naval platforms. As expected, the NAVAB missile features an imaging infrared seeker, which is indicated by its blunt nose tip. The NAVAB missile is employed on both the land based Zubin SAM system and in vertical launch containers on naval vessels. Its vertical launch capability requires the missile to rapidly incline its trajectory toward the target once launched. From the available photos, it seems that the missile uses an impulse thruster system at the upper section to achieve this inclination, similar to the Russian Tor M1 SAM. However, while the Tor M1 launcher rotates toward its target and uses only one impulse thruster, the NAVAB is housed in a static container and appears to have four or more thrusters to cover the near 360 degrees required. The NAVAB missile has both upper and lower fins, with the upper ones fixed and the lower ones functioning as moving aerodynamic control surfaces. This configuration is made possible by the integration of modern miniaturized actuators that fit into the rear part of the missile, which also need to house the nozzle. It is believed that the NAVAB was developed by Iran as a local solution after being denied access to the South African Umkanto SAM system. Notably, the impulse thruster-based thrust vectoring control in the NAVAB is considered a more advanced solution than the jet vane thrust vector control used in the Umkanto. Overall, the NAVAB represents a highly advanced yet cost-efficient short-range SAM system. A separate video will be dedicated to a more in-depth exploration of this system. Alongside the NAVAB at the exhibition, Iran also showcased its version of the Soviet Tor M1 SAM system. The Iranian copy of this system is similar in size to the NAVAB and continues to be based on the original Soviet-era design, which remains both effective and cost-efficient. Given the similarity in form factors between the NAVAB and the Tor M1 missile, as well as their common origin impulse thruster alignment systems, it seems plausible that Iranian copy, named Oghab, is the predecessor to the NAVAB. While the roles and ranges differ, it appears that Iran initially copied the Tor M1 missile to create the Oghab and later moved to an entirely new design to achieve better range and improved multi-targeting capabilities, resulting in the NAVAB. It's even possible that Iran's local Tor M1 SAM system variants can use the NAVAB as alternative longer range SAM, given the similar dimensions of both missiles. Also presented was an improved version of the Majid SAM system, which featured a smaller diameter seeker for enhanced aerodynamics and an opaque seeker window, indicating improvements in the infrared band utilized. A totally new and unique system was also observed, a hexacopter interceptor drone designed to neutralize or capture adversary FPV and quadcopter type surveillance drones. It seems to have two directionally launched capture nets for this purpose. This hexacopter was housed in an automated container, which can be placed near the area to be protected. Once deployed, the hexacopter could autonomously scramble, intercept incoming threats, and return to its container. It is highly likely that this drone operates fully autonomously, guided by artificial intelligence, with an external sensor to cue and launch it to its targets. Iran may have drawn inspiration from Israeli quadcopter-type drones, which have been employed in covert sabotage attacks within Iran. These autonomous drones are typically concealed at a location and launched towards their targets upon receiving an external command. The system's presentation alongside air defense systems at exhibitions highlights Iran's recognition of the significant threat posed by such FPV-type drones. 
This new hexacopter system can be seen as a point defense solution specifically designed to counter the quadcopter category of threats. In the realm of ballistic missiles, a modified version of the EMAD medium range ballistic missile was showcased. Although the missile was already known and had been combat tested during Operation True Promise 2 against Israel, its official name was revealed for the first time, Edamad. Interestingly, its accuracy or circular error probable, CEP, was disclosed as 70 meters. While this figure might seem relatively large, it is consistent with the missile's design, which features a high-velocity, direct-descent maneuverable re-entry vehicle. Given that the missile strikes its target at speeds ranging around Mach 6 to Mach 7 in a steep dive, the aerodynamic control fins actuators, their response delay, and the complex dynamic effects involved in the guidance and steering process contribute to this relative level of accuracy. Nevertheless, this degree of precision remains highly effective against non-hardened targets due to the Etimad's substantial warhead, weight 650 kilograms. A white color attachment at the MARV could be inflatable penetration aids to counter adversary missile defenses, which could be the main improvement of the Etimad over the EMAD. Other liquid propellant ballistic missiles featured in the presentation were known and included the cluster warhead variant of the Koramshar 2 and the Jihad variant of the Qiyam. These three missiles, along with their variants, are the currently produced liquid propellant platforms by the Aerospace Industries Organization of the Defense Ministry. In addition to these liquid propellant missiles, several well-known solid propellant ballistic missiles were also displayed. This selection included missiles from the FATH family, the FATE-11F, the DESFUL, and the Hajkasim quasi-ballistic missile. The next area of focus was the category of Space Launch Vehicles SLVs, where a roadmap outlining the Aerospace Industries Organization's SLV development was presented. In addition to this roadmap, an improved version of the Seamorg SLV was unveiled. The improved Seamorg differs from the baseline model with an elongated first stage, increasing its weight from 87 tons to 104 tons. To ensure adequate acceleration at liftoff, the Seamorg's original 1.5-meter diameter second stage was replaced with the 1.25-meter second stage from the older Saifir SLV. These modifications have doubled the payload capacity to 900 kilograms for low Earth orbit. The flight test of this improved Cymorg appears imminent. Its first stage also serves as a technology demonstrator for the Aerospace Industries Organization's next-generation SLV, the Sarir family. It is believed that the Sarir A will utilize a similar first stage, featuring upgraded motors and likely transitioning to more energetic propellants to provide the necessary thrust for the heavier Sarir SLV. Following the Sarir A, the Sarir B SLV is planned, incorporating a cluster of four side boosters attached to a modified Sarir A core stage. Looking ahead to the 2030s, the Sarush family of cryogenic propellant SLVs is in development. These are design-wise similar to the US SpaceX's Falcon 9, with comparable diameter and length. The Sorish 2 is expected to deliver similar performance, though with fewer engines than the Falcon 9's nine Merlin engines. Approximately 18 years from now, a modified Sorish 2 variant designed for manned spaceflight and featuring a reusable first stage is envisioned as a key objective for the aerospace industry's organization. This SLV, intended for manned missions, closely resembles the Falcon 9. However, given the long-term plans of the Sarush family's development, significant design and layout changes may occur over time. In contrast, the Sarir family is scheduled for a launch this year, likely starting with a suborbital test flight. There are indications that Iran plans to adopt the Soviet RD-250 engine design, currently utilized by the People's Republic of Korea in their ballistic missile and space launch vehicle programs. While Iran has already developed more advanced liquid propellant motor technology, as demonstrated by the closed-cycle Arvand engine of the Koramshar ballistic missile, the RD-250 represents an upgrade for its civilian SLV program. It is believed that the Sorish-1 SLV, which has not yet been displayed, will be the first to incorporate RD-250 variants that Iran aims to develop and produce domestically. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. 
Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.